60s, early 70s. Uh, I was ventilation officer there and I joined the rescue team. I never actually did any rescue work, fortunately. I was never called on to do it. But my time there, what I really remember about is the, the camaraderie, everybody helping each other. Even Mickey would help me now and again. <laughs> <laughs> Very briefly, I, I can't tell stories, underground stories, because they didn't happen. What I can tell the stories these lads will know about was when you were training and somebody would put their hand over, push your relief valve, blow your bag up and you'd be stuck <laughs> roof to ceiling. Yeah, we've all been there, we've all done them. Thrown away the key from the cylinder and said, find it if you want your oxygen. Yes, Maureen Pugh. My father was Joseph Kirkham and he uh, was at Flymane Colliery. He was in the rescue team and I think he was one of the first to go down. Uh, well, he did say that uh, when they first went down, his uh, shoes were burnt off his feet. Mm. But he, he had, I was saying my mother was so ill yeah. that he came, after he'd been down, he went home to make sure that she was, everything was all right with her, and then went back. And that's when he, he missed going down with the Fly Main team, and he went with Bersham. Did he? Yes. And. Uh, there was a, a Dr. Roberts that came from London and he always used to say that he always liked my father to go down with him because when he took his heart rate and his pulse going down, it was the same coming up. Mm. So he, he used to like going down with him. So he must have been pretty fit. Oh, he was. Yes, he was a very fit man. Yeah. Yes. And then, of course, uh, he, uh, as I told you before, he was the first one out of the, the gate. And he was offered the £20 by the French lady, but he didn't take it, so she awarded them £31 to go around each of the members. So they had a pound each? They had a pound each, a yes. Pound, yes. It was, yes. Just. There was a lot then, I suppose. Mm. Uh, have you got anything from your father's time, did he? No, my, my, my brothers took them all, and I didn't have any of them. He was my stepfather, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, so the brothers, so and they, they both died. They died, so where, where's the stuff now? Lost? Lost, it? yes. It's a shame, it's yes, a shame. Yes, it is, and um, my mother kept them all. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember um, someone came to my mother and said she was very sorry to hear that my father had been killed. Mm -hmm. And so my uh, auntie and myself, I would be ten then, we walked to Gresford and uh, to find out what had happened. And uh, we'd been there about a couple of hours and one of the cages came up and he stepped out. So we said, well, we've seen him. So off we went home to tell my mother. Also, I went to the, the pictures with an aunt and uh, the rescue team came on and there was my father coming along because I shouted all over the picture, oh, Auntie Nelly, there's my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so so you, you were there on the day? Oh, yes. Well, no, it wouldn't be the day. I think it was a day or two after. Right. And uh, this lady came. I don't know where she had the information from. Yeah. And, of course, my mother was so ill at that particular time. Yeah. But, uh, so, so I'd like to talk to you again about, yes. about your experiences there. Um, did your father, you said he, he went down with the Bersham team later on, did he work at Bersham later on? No, 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 it was just that he'd missed the team, yeah. and uh, so he went down with the Bersham. Yeah. So he was always at that fly main? Yes, yes. 
And, and finished when? He retired from there? Uh, no, he was injured. He was injured? Yes, he was injured down the... Uh, couldn't work anymore. Didn't you that fly line, obviously? Uh, pardon? That fly. That fly, yes, yes. I think it was in 1940, I think. It was just before. Just after the war broke now. Okay. And uh, he went to push a man away from the fall and he got it on his foot. Yeah. And of course uh, he was in hospital <coughs> for six months yeah. after that. Mm. Interesting story. Yes. And the last colliery was at was the point of uh, I started off in the coal industry in Lancashire and joined the mines rescue at Booth Town in nineteen seventy two. Just in time and to finish with training for our colony to blow up. Uh, we had two men killed and five overcome by gas. Um, we had nu numerous fires at the colony and other colonies which we regularly attended. So we seemed to be in some holidays. Um, I got involved with the mines rescue set up at the Norwood Power Station over in Flamberis. And then um, when that came to an end, I came to Point of Air and joined number two rescue team there. Um, Can they ask you to expand on the Denol, but not a lot of people realise what happened there. Yeah, the um, CEGB um, had an underground power station built, and while, the, um, while it was being built, we had three mines rescue teams based there, um, covering for safety. All were trained at Wrexham. Um, Fortunately, there was never any need to use them. Just the prop, Go and tell them. I was, uh, yeah. And the strike. Yeah, I was, um, during, this, during the last strike, I was manager of Go and in a small pit up Ponty Bobkin. And to save rescue teams having to cross picket lines to go for underground practices, they came to Go and They had three teams from Bersham and three from Point. They, uh, they all enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. I'm sure they did. Um, <laughs> 1980 to 1984. Oh, this is 70 after 74. Yeah. This is an open cast mine? No, dri a drift mine. Yeah, drift mine. Yeah. Big claim to fame, actually, Coy Talon. The Great Exhibition. Yeah. Piece of coal weighing, what was it? I, I don't know, I don't know the way to it. Huge. Was taken to the Great Exhibition. Malcolm Williams. Uh, I was in the third team in Clive just before they finished, uh, 66. Went to Gresford, uh, was in the team there. I did get called out uh, to a fire in Point of Air. Can't remember the, the day and the date, but we were called out and we were there for three weeks back in two because uh, all the the wood on the side of the roads are all combusted and each team were going down in, in relays but for three weeks we were going back and two from, from Ply. And that's where the I always talk about the blue disc <coughs> because each miner had a blue disc that was put on, on your wall of your house. And the idea of that was because you had no telephones was the police had come round with a torch and he would know where this blue disc was and he would knock you up and that's the idea and, and at the moment there's still that blue disc in my old house in, in Fly in the 122 Grim Place line mm. still there because nobody can get it off <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it was an experience to be in the mind rescue and especially when we had to put that uh, door together and a stopping <laughs> And then you would find out how long you could work for. Yeah. Because once you put that steel door together, some could work longer than other people. And that was the idea, was to find out how, how long you could work with them conditions. Yeah. The one thing was mentioned about the um, 20, 24 hours that like your yeah. oxygen off. Hours, I think it, was. it was the idea was if you were behind a stopping or something, yeah, yeah. You could last for 24 hours, I was always told that, I've never tested it, but I, I was told you could last for 24 hours, because if a fall come down... You would stop? Yeah, but before, and uh, I always tell people in the fire service, because I know Mickey was in the AFS, 
auxiliary fire service, and I was uh, for a while. Uh, and I always say to the firemen that you were you were lucky because you can talk through your mouthpiece. We couldn't. We had to do everything with a hooter, and that was the difficult part of it because you couldn't talk. If you talk, you get the fire dampen, and it would kill you straight away. So that's some of my recollections of the mines rescue, but I, I can always tell you too when I used to I'd go had to the, the college after and I could eat and eat and <laughs> eat and I couldn't stop. It made me hungry all the time. But uh, it's an experience, but it's the, the comradeship of, uh, yeah. of the people that you work with as well. You, you cool. depend on that person to... Um, Look to know it. that everything else is going right because at the end of the day he also control. was in a firefighting team as well which was part of sometimes with a rescue which was a chap from Fly yeah. called Georgie Lucky. And George is a fly lad, a uh, fly chap and uh, we've had some uh, experience on firefighting and also in, uh, I can always remember in Ifton, Ethel Kelly come to us at one time Somebody dropped the nozzle, you remember? I remember. And he was there clapping on the side, so in the end we wet him. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't come back. Yeah. It was a dividing branch. In the tank, in the That's tank. That's it. That's it. Remember we lo that. we lost a competition, yeah. <laughs> That's it, right. Yeah. Um, uh, at the time I was deputy of the uh, Quaker C-17 district in Harvard. I was number two rescue in the Harvard Colliery. Uh, we'd gone down Harvard for an exercise on this particular occasion and we'd gone to the actual district that I was in charge of, not that I was in charge of it that day, and we had been given an exercise to retrieve uh, an injured person uh, from a roadway. Now the roadway was the link road from Harvard Colliery to Bersham and the injured person was a gentleman called Robert or Bob Toffey, one of the Toffees from Ross. Bob was about 21 stone. Now we had the sets on, which weighed about 40, 45 pound, Alan, I think. Yeah. And uh, we had to go up this very, very small road because it had been in existence about six, eight, ten months and it had, it had uh, crushed in a little bit. So it was all in the cooch position, in the bent position, recovering. We found Bob Toffee, who was lying there like a beached whale. We put him into a Neil Robinson stretcher and then we put him stretcher out of the stretcher tube in the district and carried, proceeded to carry him out. Because of the restriction in the roadway, only two people could carry him. That was the number one and number three in the team. And Bob being in excess of 20 stone, believe me, it was change bearers every few yards. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the funny stories, one of the odd stories, yes. Uh, I'm Graham Lewis. Uh, my dad, James Arthur Lewis, worked at various pits in, in the Wrexham area before becoming an instructor at the Mines Rescue Station and Jim, eventually... Jimmy Lewis, was that? Jim Lewis. Jim yeah, Lewis? Yeah, yeah. yeah. From Tanner Rock? Yeah, from Gersfield. Oh, I know that. Well, I'll let you finish, I'll come back. <laughs> um, <coughs> he became an instructor there and eventually ended up as the assistant superintendent okay. working with Emily Jones. So. Uh, I grew up, um, my teenage years, with my dad working at my screen roads and I used to take my friends from school and we had tours round and going through the gallery, seeing the body lying there that had to be recovered. Mm -hmm. and dad, <laughs> yeah, and my dad uh, telling the tales of uh, attempts at rescue and things like that and how they used to fill the place with smoke. And, yeah. And of course the canaries oh, wow. that they bred there. And <coughs> of course we used to carry a canary yeah. on, on, a, on, a, on a rescue uh, yeah. exercise. Yeah. I've got a photo. Yeah, yeah. coming out. Yeah. My dad coming out of the training with a canary in That's special, brilliant, that. In yeah. special I've never seen that before. <coughs> Have you seen that one? But no, no. I'm that not. is really the special. I'll we'll show you that. And I see it yeah, I see that. Brilliant. The. Uh, the school's broadcast unit went there and they, they made a, f a film for school, for education, uh, which company it was, I have no idea, but that's a, a still from the actual programme. Is it? Yeah. So that film must be somewhere. Yeah, end. whether it was BBC or ITV, I don't know. But. Yeah. <coughs> Dig around and see if we can find it. 
Mind you, there was a small oxygen bottle in the canary cage as well, because yeah. if yeah. the canary That's fell right, off yeah. the perch, yeah. and because the canaries breathed 16 times quicker than a human being, so they would fall off That's a right. while before you, you contacted the gas. Right. But there was always a little oxygen bottle on the... So you had to give the canary oxygen. That's right. So, uh, in fact, um, a few things there. Do you like to talk about them? Yeah. Um, I've got my dad's rescue service certificate. He was a member of the various um, teams before he became an instructor. So, from 1944 until uh, 1958, he was active. In the teams. Yeah. Was he always at Wrexham or was he in the other station? No, he was always at Wrexham. Always at Wrexham. Yes. Yeah. And was he a, a, a miner to start with? Or yes, what? very much he so. Was. So yes. where, which pit did he work in? Didn't he? I've got a list here. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he had to fill in a form um, to do with claims about breathing problems. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, so this is from, compiled from that. He worked at Plas Power to start off with 1927, straight from school. Then he went to the Vron Colliery, then back to Plas Power, then to uh, Fly Hall Colliery, then Bersham, and then to the Mines Rescue Station. From the so he was well experienced before. Oh, yeah. But he must have had an interest in rescue work, in first aid, and th he must have been yes. quite well qualified be before he applied for that job. Yes, he it, it was a member of um, the St John's yeah. ambulance and we were talking earlier about uh, going to uh, the uh, competition competition yes yeah, I remember that and watching yeah. watching them bandaging up the various <laughs> casualties yeah. I remember yeah. seeing uh, some horrific scenes as a youngster with <laughs> bits of broken bones sticking out yeah. Yeah. I used to go to them myself because my father was uh, a first aider, a client, he was working in the ambulance room, and he used to be an instructor also, so many a time I'd pass the local secondary school to see him giving evening classes to the miners, mm -hmm. because we forget that in those days many miners had to be trained in first aid, oh, yeah. but I can remember going to Ifton, as you say, and then uh, sitting there and there was a tunnel, it was very realistic, yeah. and my dad turned to me and said, they won't win. Team came and why not? Says they haven't disconnected the electricity like it's still on. They all electrocuted the entire team. Yeah. Uh, anything else, Abraham? Eh, um, no, there can see now. You've got some stuff there we can talk about yeah. later on when yeah. you use yeah. um, I, uh, My experience was I didn't know anything about the mines rescue. Uh, so I got talking to the fellow colleagues for the mines who said they, what, they, what they actually were, and I said, they actually Malcolm, actually. Because uh, Malcolm was in it at the time, and he said, "Why don't you come along and have a look?" So we went to and met Mr. Jones. I think it was Mr. Jones was a big superintendent. That's it. Could uh, I ask what you thought of uh, your, your medical on the steps? Oh, <laughs> that's quite good actually. I think what I can remember <coughs> was you had to carry your weight up and down the three steps, up and down the step for so long. Then you had to rest and you had to recover within a certain time. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't be fit enough to. To do the job, but, uh, yeah, yeah, it put you to the limit. That did. Not like a member of it. There was another procedure called the entombed procedure, wasn't it? You, you, you um, I think the oxygen bottle would last you for 20 hours if you mm. did the had used the correct procedure. You filled your bag up, yes. and then you shut it off, didn't That's you? Right. And yeah. then you had to sort of lie down and not move, uh, not even think hard. That's and right. then uh, the, when when the, when the oxygen started to get contaminated, you had to then. Open it up again, yeah. To get the oxygen yeah. back in again, yeah. 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 Uh, what the, the training we had was everybody who worked in the mines knew what the conditions were down the colliery. So basically the training was to get used to the set. Uh, it's difficult to, for the, those who have seen the set, in a nose clip and a mouthpiece, and it's difficult to be working with a bag in front of you, with a nose clip, and uh, talk. Well, you could, obviously you couldn't talk to the work, and I'm trying to get around the NTD yeah, you had a squeaky a horn, a bicycle horn, beep, beep, to send messages to each other, yes, no's and so forth. Um, yes, so this is basically that's all, all the sets laid out on the floor for each individual person, and the test was you had to pick it up off your head and drop it onto yourself. Yeah. And that was it. <laughs> the job itself, that was, you say, about 40 odd pounds, that was, yeah. it? Yeah, uh, 54. 54, was it? Yeah. Were they 50, uh, 54 50, pounds? 50, yes. Good God, that's, yeah. that's half hundred, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.
No, no, I could fly. Okay, the name is Maldwin Davis. I worked at Lime and Cody and I worked for a brief period at Grassford Cory down the slant. But at Lime and Cory, I was there from 1954 until closure. I started off when I was the first aider in down at Lime and Cory, and that is how I became a member of the rescue team. I was moided to death by uh, the man at the time who was controlling it. Felix Griffiths was the man in charge at Lime and Cory who uh, controlled the rescue team and the first aiders, in fact, along with Vic's father, Percy Davis, yeah. and Harold, yeah, and uh, Les Crew. Yeah. Uh, and fantastic, they taught us very well. Mitchell Hill was the doctor, and he was the doctor responsible down at the rescue centre, who stood at the side of you when you did your treading on the boxes <laughs> to the metronome. Remember the metronome swing? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you had to be one foot out, yeah, and that's right, and you had to be in time. <laughs> so I'll just say, all right, I think that will do for a minute. <laughs> yeah. But I can honestly say, in the time that I spent with the rescue service, it was one of the happiest periods that I've had. I made good mates, not only at Flag, but also at Cressford and Point of Air. Everywhere I went, yeah. you were always welcomed by the people there. You knew you could trust your mates in the rescue teams, but you knew you could trust and rely on all the miners that, uh, who were down the pet at the time too, irrespective of their positions. We all relied on each other. But the rescue brigade, in my opinion, were fantastic. They were all good lads, they turned out, and they put themselves through a lot of pain and hardship. For what? We dreaded the thought, but we were prepared, and we were prepared very well by your dad. I went by into Booth's Town, uh, yeah, on standby there to replace a guy that would be in 1961. Of course, you had to retire injured. from the rescue when you were 40, didn't you? That's right. It was only a young person's, uh, young person's occupation. That's right. Well, when uh, the captain, now he was in the number one team at Lye, now our captain was a great guy, Harry Wynyard, if any of you knew him, and uh, Tom Aspie was our vice captain, and I took over the number one team, which was a feather in my cap because I was, I regarded my uh, people in the team better than me, but I was proud to be with them. But forget captain, it was only a name. Yeah. You relied on each other, and uh, all the checks that you did were down to them to look after you, and you looked after them. Happy times, proud, and I know that I'll go to my end very proud of uh, of my past, actually. I was uh, in Howard Rescue Team in the late 50s, and then I transferred to Cressford Corrie to work, and I joined the rescue team there. Uh, I don't have many memories, only of the rescue station, which you already know about. Uh, the captain in Cressford was Cliff Hughes, and uh, my captain in Hubbard, Peter, would know better, I suppose. Jonathan? Huh? Jonathan, was it little Jonathan? No, 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 not little Jonathan. Little Jonathan. Ah, yeah, with the with the moped. Ah, 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 we never got the number two. Never contacted number one at all. I don't no, that's right. You didn't. No, um, I, 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 I think I it was Gwillem. Gwillem, somebody. The wife of the school teacher. Only then. Well, Jonathan was on the rescue. Yes, Jonathan yeah. was on the rescue. He was captain. Couldn't have called him a bit. No, no, he wasn't there. Yeah, but you see, I would never have known Jonathan in you the rescue team, and yet I know him so well. Yeah. Because yeah. we worked together, yeah. but not as a rescue member. No. So when did you start your rescue work at Harvard? Uh, 1958. 58. Uh, and uh, um, did you volunteer? Were you oh yes, I mean everybody to... volunteered. Yeah, you had an interview in the office, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean Emlyn was there, wasn't she? That's the oh Emlyn, yeah. yeah. Well, he, and you he had was... an interview in the office, and if you were interested, you you, you went for the interview. <laughs> and um, I think the man just Clark was there, but I know I know Emlyn yeah. was there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they did interview, you know, I mean, they just wouldn't have taken anybody yeah, they on. Wouldn't. They wouldn't have taken Bob Tuffy off. No, not Bob, no. <laughs> you remember Bob, do you? Well, I can remember the same story as you're telling, 
only it happened about a, a lot further in the colliery, down Morcus. Where they did the same thing with him. That because he weighed so much, yeah, you know. Yeah. That that when the rescue well, teams went down and they wanted to move it. somebody. Is it true we that. Uh, we all know what Moor stands for. Hey, I don't know why the district was called out. Yes, we yes. won't go into them now, thank you, Ali. Uh, can, can I just ask David? Um, oh, I forgot what I was going to ask you now. Uh, let me think. Um, I've asked you about you getting chosen. Uh, did, is it true that um, you had to train down the different collieries? You went to different collieries. You went down different collieries on yeah. a training exercise. You did. I, I'm not sure how many times a year you went to a different colleges. Well, we, had, we, we had a rescue session at once a month. That's and right. Perhaps out of the year, we have about three sessions in the training centre. Yeah. And then every session thereafter, you went to a different colliery. Yeah. Because you had to become au fait with yeah. every yeah. working yeah. place in every colliery. So would you say then by the end of the time that the, the centre was, was working, that most of the rescue men uh, were familiar with... The, all the other colleries, so they could have yeah. gone down any colliery yes, and yes, knew yes, where they were. Yes, yes. Uh, went down every got colliery. on with it. Yes. Knew the condition of his web training or web pit or water training. Yeah. And you knew which cage you could stand up in and which you couldn't. You did, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you went yeah, to Bursham. Yeah, you knew the one on the bend in the middle of the shaft, which was Bursham. Yeah. I should have told you, actually, uh, at Flyman Colliery, I was the last rescue man there. Yeah, but that used to go that the the Yeah. yeah. Well, I used to remember when I was growing up, I used to go to the competition and oh, see these people being oh, bandaged oh, up. And that's right, yes. I can tell some funny stories about that. In fact, I might do this after all. You'd need, for a start off, you'd need an age we were in for another thing. In the Winter Gardens. In the Winter Gardens. So I really wouldn't have to do with that. It wasn't uh, area, it was uh, national. It was a national competition. Digital cameras, you'd take a little card out. I got a very funny story about it. I used to be there myself, actually. I used to go myself. So it was because of my knowledge of the pet dollar was kept there. Uh, just in case a team was required, I could go in with them. Yeah. Yeah, but Jackie Thomas popping back from the rest yeah. I was working with Jackie. Yeah. Place, I also remember the under manager mm -hmm. and the manager of Flyman Comedy coming out on the call with us. They had to be trained in the use of the apparatus as well. Yeah. yeah. So Peter Criddle, it was nice to see him struggling. <laughs> yeah, but a great guy. And uh, Kelly used to do the same. Method. Yeah, but they were all got Keith Fulton, the manager. He was very knowledgeable about rescue work and very proud of his teams. Oh yeah. So I mean, what we're talking about is a lot of brave men, really, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you, you can't be clearer than that. I mean, all miners are brave men, but these rescuers are braver. I think the ones who went down the rest didn't yeah. you know, yeah. were for certain. So why why did people volunteer in general then, do you think? I, well, why I, I volunteered because I'd lost my dad down Gresford anyway. Yes. And um, mm. I, I, I think at that time it was a step in progressing. I mean I was going to tech once a weekend and something like that. But I think it was a it was a step in progressing. I mean, I was doing a lot of first aid teams and competitions at the same time. It was ju I was just all mining, that's all. Yeah. I mean, everybody from the village worked in the mine. Yeah. Most people, most men in the village worked in the sure, mine. Sure. It, it was a, it was a culture. It was yeah. the culture. <coughs> I mean, it was nice to have a day off when you were on afternoons as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. yes. Well, you became part of a team, didn't you? You know. Yes. And yes. it was quite a lot of technical training and everything, yeah. if you were interested. But to wear that badge when you went out of a night time for yeah. a trip, yeah. you, yeah. you had a mind rescue badge. Yeah, yeah a little bit. And you were somebody, yeah. because you worked in a, you lived in a you village where... You have a badge that was given to the 30 yeah. members of the recovery team. Yeah. No. Yeah. My no brother's name. Yeah, he's got one there, he's, he's got a badge. She married in 1930, middle, getting well, sorry, I keep looking into Welsh. Um, she remarried in about 1938 or 39. Her pension then finished because she was she remarried. But I was still uh, a dependent. Mm. And anything I needed, I had to go to Wrexham for it. Now, of course, when someone passed the scholarship, oh, you have a bike when you pass the scholarship. It's not like today. And I went there, they wouldn't give me any money. I had to 
collect beer bottles and take milk out for my own. But for I my think it'd be the old pair of shoes, old Blondie. That's an industrial one. Yeah. Because that's where the plans are. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was a long hike down there. When we, oh, had, oh, when we oh, had that oh, fire oh, in Gresford, oh, they said that it, you know, they were taking so much stone on the top and the shade of coat ignited. And we had a, a ball of fire. And uh, they, they said it wouldn't happen, but we were getting oil. We were underneath the old Rubri Owings. And the oil was coming down and we were working in bathers. And we were going back into the into the showers to get a wash. And as I said, you depend on your mates to wash your back, don't you? Yeah. But funny story on that. Yeah, but, yeah but we used to have swell figure. Yeah. And that's what they plough onto you to get the oil on. And then you were coming down in Dumbo then, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. If you read the new there was a fault <coughs> before the make it stable and there was storm in that and they were saying they were getting balls of gas yeah. went on fire. Yeah. So they sent me down for the big MSA, a long probe and everything. I said, oh, time was here, there's nothing going to happen next month. Oh, it was about 10, 15 yards in the waist. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know where that was going. Uh, Get out the bloody road. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to test on your memories now because I can't remember the exact name. Do you remember the long tube with the breathing mask? Yes, I do. And, and the poison, what is it called? Antipoise. 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 Antipo